In the previous video, we were talking about the concept of excretion together with homeostasis, but I told you that um, there was a particular chemical known as ammonia produced by your liver, and your liver will convert ammonia into urea. And these two substances are referred to as nitrogenous wastes. So even though your body has now produced urea, it is still circulating inside the blood. That is where the other organ comes in to remove the urea from the body, and that organ is known as the kidney. In this video, we are going to be just focusing a little bit on the anatomy of the kidney, just a little bit, not too advanced by the way, but we have to focus on kidneys when we are covering homeostasis. Why do we have to talk about the kidney? Well, because the kidney first carries out excretion. The kidney is a bean-shaped organ, and how it carries out excretion, to put it very simply, is they will receive blood through a blood vessel represented by the red arrow. The arrow shows the blood entering the kidney, and the blood going into the kidney will usually have a high concentration of urea, which is a waste product. They have salts like minerals, uh, minerals, ions, or salts such as sodium ions, uh, chloride ions, potassium ions, calcium ions, and such, uh, which you get from your diet, and you also have lots of water. Now, the problem is, I told you, urea is a nitrogenous waste. We have to remove it from the body. Salts are important, like sodium ions, potassium ions, and such. But too much of salts can also be detrimental to the body. And I've also mentioned that water is important, but too much of water can also cause harm. It, can be, it may cause your cells to swell and burst. So here's the interesting thing. When the blood goes into the kidney, represented by the red line, another blood vessel comes out of the kidney. And that blood vessel, represented in the blue line, it will have a lower amount of urea, salt, and water. So where did the uh, urea, salt, and water go to? So the kidney removes that excess urea, salts, and water from the blood, and they will form this liquid that we all know, known as urine or pee. So urine is just a liquid or a solution that contains water, salts, and urea not needed by our body anymore. And subsequently, we will remove the urea from our body. That's how it works. So the kidney carries out excretion by filtering the blood and producing urine. That's the first thing that the kidney does. The second thing that the kidney also does is it helps with homeostasis. What is homeostasis, by the way? Homeostasis is maintaining the optimal internal environment in your body. For example, if you drink <laughs> too much water, a bucket of water over there, that's so huge uh, compared to the size of your body. But if you drink too much water, that's not good. So the kidney produces more urine, so you will pee more, you will urinate more to remove that excess water from your body. So this returns the amount of water in your blood back to optimum conditions. But if you sweat too much, the kidney produces less urine and it reabsorbs water. So it retains more water inside your body. So that is how kidney does both things, excretion and homeostasis. In reality, by the way, does the kidney actually just do these two functions, excretion and homeostasis? In reality, no. The kidney also has some other extra functions, but we are not going to talk about them. Well, I guess we are not going to talk about them at all, so there's no point bringing it up. So, moving on, let's look at the structure of the urinary system. The urinary system, in most cases, is made out of two kidneys. Yes, there have been instances where the person is born with only one kidney or five kidneys. There are quite rare news of these things happening. If you see the arrow, the red color arrow where it's pointing downwards, uh, that one is the blood vessel going into the kidney, that's known as the renal artery, and the blood vessel with the arrow pointing upwards, that's the renal vein, that is just to represent the blood supply in and out of the kidney. And another set of tubes are going downwards, and that set of tubes are connected to another pouch known as the bladder. So we have the kidney, ureter, and bladder. Right? And if we were to take the kidney out, uh, and if we were to cut it into halves to see the inside of the kidney, we are able to see that the kidney actually has a few sections. The sections of the kidney are as follows. The outermost section, which is the capsule, 
the slightly inner part, cortex, which is important, the medulla, which is important, and also the pelvis. The reason why the cortex and medulla are important is because internally, a lot of important structures are running through those two layers, and we will cover that in a while. So in the exam, usually, they may give you the section of the kidney over here, and they may just ask you to label those parts, cortex, medulla, and pelvis. Now, in terms of excretion and homeostasis, the kidney has this extremely important structure. And this is the one that causes the most amount of pain for students. And that thing is known as a nephron. A nephron is a structure that produces urine in the kidney, and it's made out of a few important parts or portions, known as the Bowman's capsules and tubules. Tubules are just small tubes. And if you notice the tubules, I've, I've branched out the tubules by showing PCT, loop of Henle, DCT, and collecting that. So collecting duct, not duck, okay, but yeah. Um, so when I use the word duck or duct, you know, it's just pronunciation issues. Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm drawing out the structure of the nephron. In most cases in the exam, they will not ask you to draw out the structure of the nephron. What they're going to give you is um, they'll give you the image of the nephron and they may ask you to label it. Now, the nephron looks like this weird looking, it looks weird, okay? It looks like this coiled snake of sorts. It does look like a weird mutated snake, doesn't it? Um, but the good news about the nephron is it has a beginning part and the ending part. The initial portion or the beginning of the nephron is always represented by that cup-like structure. And that cup-like structure is known as the Bowman's capsule. All right. And then we also have the second part, which is attached to the Bowman's capsule, known as the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, I know what you're thinking. Do I have to memorize the full name of PCT? The good news is you don't have to, right? You can just call it the PCT in the exam or if they ask you to label it. The word proximal just means in this case, it is nearer to the center or the um, beginning of a structure. So the beginning of the structure is the Bowman's capsule. So proximal just means it's nearer, okay, to the Bowman's capsule. Convoluted as a word just means twisted. So as you can see that portion, that it looks like, you know, it's quite coiled in a complicated manner. Tubule, like I said to you, is just small tubes. So the proximal convoluted tubule are just small twisted tubes nearest to the Bowman's capsule. That's what it means. They're not going to ask you the meaning of it. I'm just explaining it is named as such. Then we also have the this part where it is like a U-shape okay loop of henley and then we have the distal convoluted tubule Con again tubule small tubes convoluted complicated or coiled and distal meaning to say further away from the bowman's capsule so that's why it's called distal convoluted tubule in the exam dct is good enough and the dct will then attach to something known as the collecting duct that's what it means so do you have to know the names of all this structure? Yes, you do. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, you know, uh, just take a deep breath and be like, yeah, okay, I need to know this. Now, and it's about to get a little bit more complicated. One of the most important questions that I love to ask my students is this. When you look at this overall structure of the nephron, is it a large structure within the kidney or is it a small structure within the kidney? So most students will be like, uh, I don't know. Some students will say, well, it's large. Some students will say, well, it's small. But when you look at the structure of the kidney over here, the section, uh, where's the nephron? You don't see the nephron at all, do you? Okay, you can only just see the cortex, medulla and pelvis. Now, what I'm going to tell you here is, you don't have to memorize this part, but I'm going to tell you that each kidney usually has about 1 million nephrons. 1 million of these structures are found inside each kidney. So that should give you an idea as to whether the nephrons are small or large. So obviously, if the kidney can fit 1 million or so nephrons, 
the structure of the nephron is very small. So in reality, the nephrons are quite microscopic. But of course, in this case, I'm just making it as, as slightly larger. And this is how the nephrons are fitted inside the kidney. So, so you're like, ah, okay, that's how it looks like. I'm drawing out one nephron over there, another nephron here. Uh, I'm just drawing out, see, as you can see, we are just drawing out a couple of nephrons here as follows. And I'm also going to just put in the layers of the kidney, the cortex, medulla, and pelvis, right? So, if you notice that certain parts of the nephrons are only found in the cortex, certain parts of the nephrons are only found in the medulla, and certain parts of the nephrons are only found in the pelvis. As an example, as you can see over here, look at the parts where I'm circling. It shows you that the Bowman's capsule, PCT and DCT, and also part of the collecting duct are located at the cortex. But the loop of Henle extends down to the medulla. As you can see over there, I've highlighted that in yellow. However, the collecting duct goes all the way until the pelvis. So you need to know these parts as well because you need to know the locations. They may ask you, where's the in the kidney, where's the Bowman's capsule located? Then you have to say, ah, it's located in the cortex. Uh, what about PCT and DCT? They are also in the cortex. Loop of Henle is located usually in the... Uh, we, yes, I know part of the loop of Henle is in the cortex, but we always say that the loop of Henle is in the medulla and the collecting duct extends all the way down to the pelvis of the kidney. So this is the introduction to the part of the kidney first that we have to know.